Hello and welcome to this, the first walkthrough in-depth guide for our Signal product, which has been created by Chaos Culture. Now Chaos Culture and the developer behind it wanted to wait until we were at least at phase two, as he had a desire to add more modules and make Signal even better than when we first released it. We're now rapidly approaching phase three, and so it's now my turn to take a step back and look at what's already in Signal and start to walk through how you can use it and most importantly, some ideas and inspirations to get you started. If you've not seen Signal before, it's a Max for Life toolkit which has been designed to be as efficient as possible when it comes to your computer's CPU consumption. Effectively, each module can be wired to another um, there's inputs, there's modulators, and there's outputs. And effectively, what you want with Signal is to create something, signal-wise, that can be used. Now that signal can be used to affect audio, it could be used to control a parameter within live. Alternatively, it could be used with a, a DC coupled audio interface to create control voltage to really get technical and geeky with some modular external gear as well. In this tutorial, we'll be creating an LFO. It'll have a custom shape and we'll modulate the filter cutoff with it. Sounds simple. To start things off, here's a little idea for a song. Let's give it a quick listen through. Now on the second track, I've added some basic chords to the bass line. It sounds like this. So now let's add a low pass filter into the mix. We'll add some modulation to the chords and this should make it basically fit better within the song itself. To do so, let's load up an instance of Signal right in front of the filter. So within Signal, I go to my list of modules and I'll create an LFO and a remote module simply by clicking on the headers on the left. So by connecting the modules like this and mapping the remote to the filter cutoff in live, the LFO should now modulate it. Let's change that up, let's, let's pick a different shape. That's better, but I would like a little bit more regularity. I'd like that LFO to restart every four bars. To do so, we would just connect a clock module to the LFO. So Signal is a Max for Live device, and if you use them with any anger, uh, you will know that the timing could be improved if you're looking at milliseconds. Okay, so to improve the timing of the LFO, I'm gonna enclose the filter with the latency devices like this. This makes the LFO and any modulation from Signal 100% sample accurate. It's something that's unique, as far as we're aware, within the Max for Live world. Okay, now we've done that, let's experiment with some custom LFO shapes. We can, of course, limit the modulation range so the filter mo movement isn't as drastic. And finally, I, this build up right here, okay? I, I wanna add some variation during this bit. So really, I wanna smooth that modulation down a bit during that period. And I'm gonna do that with the freeze module. I'm gonna insert it after the LFO, and to replace a connection, you just hold down the Alt key. 
Otherwise, both the LFO output and the freeze output would be added together, which is not what we want right now, but could have some interesting effects. Great. Let's listen to the freeze effect and play around with that. Okay, so now we can automate it. Let's do so. See how it sounds. Awesome. That's it, a simple first start. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, then please join us and get involved at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash signal dash users. See you next time. Cheers.